This is the first video that is part of the project in which I'll be creating a tier list of zones within the level range of 20 to 60. In the intro video of this project, I've talked about how these videos are going to work. The link to the video is in the description below. Now before I start, please bear this in mind. 1. I will not be telling you how to play your class. 2. After I have released videos on every 20 to 60 zone in Kalimdor, a tier list of these zones will be released. Now with that out of the way, it's time to start. The zone I will be talking about today is Desolus. When I wrote slash who Desolus, I was surprised that I wasn't alone here. 1.5 out of 5 is the rating I have to give this zone, unfortunately. The rest of the video is dedicated towards explaining why I gave the zone this rating. You can find timestamps in the description below. Alright, so, the total amount of time it took me to finish the zone was 1 hour and 49 minutes. I decided to round the number. I had 100% mount speed, war mode on, and every heirloom possible. Even after that amount of time, I still had a lot of incomplete quests left. However, most of them would have taken too long to complete for the sake of convenience. And by convenience, I mean getting to level 60 ASAP. If we take into account the level I started at and the level I ended up with, then through easy math, the experience gained from the zone amounted to 3.07% XP per minute. As we all know, one level equals 100 XP. 3.07% is not much. You will see why in future videos. There are other zones which give you much more than that. All right, now for some information about the zone itself and why did I give it a 1.5 out of 5 rating. One of the things that struck me the most was the poor density of rare mobs. There are only a total of 7 rare mobs in the zone. Compared to other areas, this is a really desolate number indeed. However, it is worth noting that not many people actually go to desolates to level their characters. What this means is that the rare mobs aren't really that endangered here, so the chances of finding them at their spawn points is relatively high. Yes, I said spawn points. That is because all the rares here have more than one point they can spawn in. This is generally annoying when you're trying to find them. But fortunately, all of the spawn points are quite close to where you would be while leveling. Probably the worst thing is how far you have to travel between quests. It eats up so much time, which in turn negatively impacts the XP per minute gain. Some quests aren't exactly clear, forcing you to read the quest description if you don't know them already. When you enter Carnum's Glade for the first time, you get four quests to complete at once. Unfortunately, the way they are designed and laid out doesn't make them quick. Alright, now for some tips. The quests in Desolus are divided into five storylines. The Naga Threat, Carnum's Glade, Threats from Sartheris Strand, Uniting the Tribes, and Nigel's Point. I'll be providing tips for each individually. There are also optional quests and quest lines in the zone. I'll be covering them too. Starting with Nigel's Point. Tip number one. When you enter Desolus from the north, make sure to check this area east of the road. Here, a rare white-furred hyena called Giggler can spawn. Tip number two. When you start questing here, you will be sent from Nigel's Point to Sargeron. There you will find objects which will offer you three optional quests to complete complete. You should complete them, they are worth it. Also, make sure to be on the lookout for Prince Kellen, a rare satyr. Tip number three. In this spot, you will find an NPC called Scenarian Ambassador Thunk. His questline is optional, but it's worth the time. Tip number four. If you haven't found Giggler from tip number one, and you're being sent to Thunder Axe Fortress, check out this spot. This is Giggler's second spawn point. Tip number five. When questing in Thunder Axe Fortress, be careful about these guys. The Burning Blade Adepts. They have an ability called dragon's breath, which disorientates you. The real danger is that the ability does not have diminishing returns, meaning that every dragon's breath cast will not have reduced duration on you. Be very careful about this, especially when you're pulling a lot of them for AoE. Tip number six. There are a lot of orcs in Thunder Axe Fortress. You should loot them. You will get an item which gives you an optional quest. Complete it it's worth it. Tip number seven. After killing the Zargon for the quest, putting their heads together, go straight to Ethel Rathor. Trust me, you will save a lot of time. Tip number eight. There is a quest called the Carnital Shipwreck. Don't 
do it. It's not worth it. It's got too much traveling. All right, now moving on to the Naga Threat. Tip number nine. The first quest you get at Ethel Rathor will have you fly around the area. While that's happening, spam these two commands in your chat. The area you'll be flying over is home to two rare mobs. Using the target commands, you will verify if they are alive or not, unless you have an add-on which does it for you. Tip number 10. There are mobs called the Slitherblade Naga, which you will have to kill. Be very careful when engaging them in melee, however. They apply a stacking poison debuff, which deals a fuck ton of damage. Tip number 11. At one point, you will get a quest called Going Deep. For this quest, you will get an item called a Slitherblade Charm. Use it underwater to transform into a Naga, which will drastically increase your swimming speed. Very important. Tip number 12. At one point, you will get a quest called The Enemy of Our Enemy. Speak to the NPC who gave you this quest and ask her to give you the Slitherblade Charm from the previous tip. It will save you a lot of time. Tip number 13. The Scenarian researcher Korra's last quest will involve sending you to the middle of Desolus to a place called Carnum's Grove. Do it. Don't go to Nigel's point yet. Now moving on to Carnum's Glade. Tip number 14. You will get a quest to throw blood-filled leeches at the local thunder lizards in the area. When you kill a lizard, a leech will spawn and you can loot it. But be careful. The leeches can be killed. Be mindful when you're using AoE abilities. Moving on to uniting the tribes and threats from the Sartheris strand. Tip number 15. At Manorok Coven, if you see the mob called Lord Azrathok, don't aggro him. He will kill you. Tip number 16. You might stumble upon a caged tauren in the Valley of Spears. It is a part of an escort quest. Don't do it. Too much time. The same thing goes with a quest called While You're Here, which you're also going to get at the Valley of Spears. And that's it. Would I personally tell someone to go on level here? No. But hey, if you want a change of climate and level in a zone which you haven't been in in a while, then go ahead. Thanks for watching. Next video will be either about Stone Talon Mountains or the Eastern Plaguelands. We shall see which one first. Catch you later.